all alopecias have one fundamental root cause. It's not physics. It's stress. Hair loss simplified. personal heroes is Albert Einstein. You know, his brilliance and what he did for the scientific community, I mean, is, I mean, you just can't deny it. What really stood out to me with Albert Einstein is his simplistic nature. How he was this brilliant guy, but his clothes were simple his hairstyle was wild and he focused in on what he was good at one of my favorite parts about Albert Einstein was the fact that he said his imagination was the difference between him and many scientists in physics he was able to envision problems and simplify them in order to come up with even more complex solutions, such as EMC squared. But hair loss is not physics. Hair loss seems to be physics because for something that seems to be so simple, hair falling, hair not growing. We seem to have a bunch of different theories about it, a bunch of different products about it, and no one, not from the billion dollar pharmaceuticals down to the common person that eats out the garden and uses, I don't know, onion juice on their scalp has quite figured it out. On this video, I am going to simplify hair loss down to what I found to be true. And yes, it's theoretical. So this video, hair loss simplified. It's not physics, it's stress. And it's that simple. Stress of the follicle is what causes the hair to not grow efficiently. Now I am going to go through a few seemingly different stressors of the hair follicle. And then I'm gonna point it to just a very simple way of looking at it. And when you do see it for what it is, it becomes simpler to understand how to combat hair loss. Let's start with the very basics, which is traction alopecia. Traction alopecia is when something puts pressure on a hair, pulls it out of the follicle. And over time, that follicle does not produce more hair. You see this, and especially women, when they have used glues, extensions, braids, and hairstyles that cause tugging or pulling, usually in the front. But when it gets bad enough, such as uh, black women, mostly because of their hairstyles, you will find that they have a lot of traction alopecia. And if you really take a look at it, you'll notice that their the frontal is really hit hard where their whole hairline moves backwards. We know this is not DHT based. It's simple. It's not physics. This is something pulling a hair 
out of the follicle over and over and over again. And the follicle says, that's it. Does this have anything to do with androgens? No. Anything to do with DHT? No. Testosterone? No. Anything to do with nutrition? No. Anything to do with the gut? No. Anything to do with a parasite or pathogen? No. This is strictly stress, physical stress, traction stress of a follicle. Stress. Let's go to coloring. This is more universal. Women, men color their hair. You will find that the hair can get brittle. You will find that the hair can get dry. It can break off. And seemingly, a dry, brittle hair. It is not just about the the hair itself that is becoming damaged. It is the follicle itself. So what causes the terminal hair, which is organic, to have problems is what's also stressing the follicle out and it is having problems so this thinning hair from different chemicals things that you place on the hair those same chemicals are stressing the follicle out it's chemical stress it could be metallic stress now Does it have to do with anything with DHT? No, kind of. Does it have anything to do with diet? No. It's topical chemicals that cause the stress of the follicle. The follicle produces weaker hair and the hair that it does have becomes stripped away of vitamins and also it becomes thinner and problematic. Stress is not physics. When you catch a fungal infection, let's just say you were out somewhere and somehow some sort of fungus got into your scalp. The scalp becomes itchy, red, bumps. And now you have hair loss and patches on your scalp. The doctor will look at it and say you caught a fungus rash. Here's what we're going to give to you. What has happened? The follicle is under some sort of immune response because it believes that something is attacking it. The fungus does not belong there. It causes the follicle stress. Stress of a pathogen, parasite, bacteria, yeast, fungus. This is something that is organic that is now within the scalp environment that is causing a problem. Thus, it is not physics. It's stress. Stress of a follicle that is now under attack. Let's not forget about the hair loss that happens with cancer patients when their treatments causes stress of the follicle And what used to be a head full of hair becomes bald and hairless. That stress of the radiation or the meds causes a problem with the follicle because it is just too strong. That stress of fixing the cancer causes hair loss. Now, let's move forward. What happens when we have these gut issues where we have an allergic reaction or there's something that we're eating that our bodies do not agree with? It becomes, it gets into the bloodstream. Our entire body is being affected by this thing that we are eating or this thing that we're consuming and hair on the body, in the body and on top of the scalp is also being affected. So whatever this thing is, is causing an allergic reaction. So various places throughout the body are being affected. Thus, the follicle is under stress. It is fighting some sort of immune response, but it is a whole body immune response 
However, the scalp tells you what the gut is thinking. The scalp tells you the quality of the gut system. And the scalp is, in my humble opinion, an upside down, inside out gut. The follicle becomes stressed because they are in a war, not only against whatever they deem is a threat, but the body's immune system itself. Because here is what happens. The follicle has immune privilege. What does that mean? Have you heard that word before? Yes, you have. Because the placenta has immune privilege. Why does it do that? Because when a woman is growing a child, like when a follicle is growing a terminal hair, it grows fast. It almost seems as if it is a mutation. So the body says, I don't know what you are, but you're growing pretty fast. Let me make sure you are not problematic. In order to save the terminal hair from being eradicated by the body's immune system for safety, The follicles developed immune privilege, which means that they have the privilege of being their own immune system to protect the baby, which is the terminal hair. However, when things get really bad, the body's immune system jumps that bridge and begins to annihilate the threat that now the follicle has been overrun with. And we call that hair loss. And then it gets worse than that. DHT comes in the picture and decides it's going to shut everything down and calcify and quarantine everything. So it is not physics. It's stress. When you look at all the stressors, I glossed over DHT a bit, but if you can imagine that you are a person and someone comes in and to decide to If they touch you, if they hug you, you kind of calcify. We see these on the movies, right? When, you know, a person has some sort of magical powers and they touch somebody and turn to stone. That's exactly kind of what DHT is doing to the arteries, to the veins, to the subcutaneous fat, to everything. And not only that, it's stripping away the very food of the derma papilla, which is, in my humble opinion, the subcutaneous fat of the scalp. When you really look at a a follicle, you would notice that the root is embedded inside of the third layer of the scalp. Some people put like veins on the end of it and little arteries on the end of this thing. And I say, well, if that's the case, when you cut that follicle out for a hair transplant and stuffed it on the top of the head in some random slot that you created, right? There's no way it's going to fall directly on another open artery. What does it do? They cut it so that the little straw of the derma papilla can be embedded inside of the layer that it can extract resources from. The whole thing about it being connected to a root, it really throws out this entire hair transplant. If that's the case, hair transplants will not work. And as soon as you cut that thing, that was it. And I can tell you this, if you have your child and you are hungry, you have no access to resources, you are being calcified, miniaturized, and your whole life is to create this baby of a terminal here, would you be healthy or stressed out? It's not physics. It's stress. I call the reasoning of hair loss or balding or receding or thinning, acute follicle stress, AFS, nothing more, nothing less. When you stop the follicle from being stressed out is when you halt hair loss. Now, let me tell you some of the reasons or some of the ways that you all have been halting hair loss, a.k.a. uh, reversing acute follicle stress. If you're starving and you're given more food, wouldn't you become less stressful? That's nutrition, 
either through vitamins, biotin, uh, the different type of vitamins you can take internally or hair vitamins that like oils. So a starving follicle gets more vitamins and nutrients, less stress, growth. Okay. Removing, inhibiting androgens and DHT, less calcification, less fibrosis. Um, you have the subcutaneous fat not being dried out and the tension of the scalp being that it's now being thickened and thinned in other areas. That's less physical stress. That's less nutritional stress. That is less environmental and hormonal stress. You will grow. When your hair is brittle and you use some sort of conditioner in it, uh, or your scalp is too dry, you use an oil. Or if it's too oily, you dry up the oil. What I'm saying is that it doesn't matter how you combat hair loss. How have you been combating hair loss? What you've really been doing is taking this pretty, feminine, petite follicle and removing her stress. And if you want to lose hair, all you have to do is cause acute follicle stress. It's not physics. It's stress. So the takeaways of this particular video is such. Take a look at the various different angles of the follicle and de-stress it. DHT, remove. Any pathogen parasite, anything that needs to be sanitized, remove. Any built up sebum dandruffs, remove. Less stress. Any tension, use massaging. That'll increase the uh, hormones of growth. And it also releases physical traction or tension. Anything that's causing hair traction, release. If your follicles are starved because of your diet, gut issues, and or pro you need probiotics or prebiotics based on some sort of gut issue, do that. If you um, have problems with androgens, balance them. Guess what? All you're doing is taking a follicle that has moved to a more stressful environment or climate, and you've taken this follicle and moved it more into balance. And the more you move it into balance or comfort, what you're trying to do is create a factory of feminine follicles that are so comfortable, all they have to think about is producing another child or holding the child they have, antigen stage, longer. It is not physics. It's not medicines. It's not herbs. It's not massaging. It's not tools. It's not transplants. It's not all these different names and theories. It is acute follicle stress. Take that environment and move it backwards to comfort and your hair loss will halt and you can also begin to uh, reset, restore the follicles that seemingly went into a coma because they were so stressed out that they rather sleep than to deal with the trauma that they have daily on your scalp. So that's my video for today. Hopefully something here has helped you to halt hair loss and to restore it. If so, hit the like or subscribe. If not, give another video a chance. I'm pretty sure you'll find something interesting, but if I can do it, you all can do it too. Let's get you back to the bar.